Now that we've seen expected value in this very basic gambling problem of a raffle, we're going to start applying it to other gambling problems. So let's look at roulette. So you are going to put a single sp on a single spin of an American roulette wheel. The casino payout for a line bet is five to one, meaning for every one dollar you bet, if you win, you'll get your one dollar back plus five more dollars from the casino. I should say if you win, you will receive back from the casino if you win. There we go. Casinos don't tend to pay people if they lose. Just a little hint to you. Okay, so you bet a dollar on a single spin for the line bet shown at right. So I just have a randomly picked line bet. It doesn't really matter which line I picked. It would all work the same way. We're going to construct a probability distribution for your profit and find the expected value. Okay. The thing about a casino game like this is that it's pretty straightforward. You either win or you lose. I mean, those are your kind of only options. So let me actually throw in those two outcomes at the front of this table real quick. There we go. So your outcome would be that you win or that you lose. That's it. Now, if you lose, it's really easy to figure out your profit because you're losing a dollar that you paid to play. So that's negative one. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Now, what about your profit if you win? Now, the way casinos work is they'll advertise five to one, two to one. So you can see down here, the bottom of the column, the column bets are all advertised two to one. Um, the rest of the bets, you can find the payouts usually somewhere around the table. So they'll tell you, for example, an even bet is one to one. Right. So what that means is that when you pay your dollar and you win, you'll get your dollar back, but you'll get five dollars more. That's the way it works. So it's five dollars back or five dollars in winnings for every one dollar you bet. And you always get your dollar back. So that means that your profit is five. Right. Because you just get your dollar back plus the five dollars from the casino. That's the way payout works. So if ever you're in a casino, that's when you see these colon markings or they'll say five, two, one, they'll say the word two. That's what they mean. OK, so now let's go to the probabilities here. So remember, there's 38 spaces total. Now, your line bet is betting on all six of these numbers, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So the probability that you win is six out of 38. Uh, but that means that losing would be all the rest of the spaces. And there's 38 total. So 38 take away 6 would be 32. So all we need to do is find the, the expected value of that. We need to multiply profit times probability plus profit times probability. Or if you'd like, you can put the profit in L1 and the probability in L2. It's kind of easy either way. There, I pulled up a calculator and I typed them in L1 and L2. Make sure when you put the negative in that you use the little negative symbol down here by the enter key, that one. Then you go to stat, calculate, one variable, L1 and L2. If you don't see the frequency list, if this menu doesn't come up for you on a TI-84, that means you need to upgrade your operating system, by the way. And then you can see there's the profit, negative 0.0526. I'd get the same thing by saying 5 times uh, 6 divided by 38 plus negative 1 times 32 divided by 38. I mean, these ones are so simple because there's not much to them. So you just take profit, multiply by probability, profit, multiply by probability, and you add them up. All right, so let me type up the expected value. There we have it. And of course, since this is money, we would give it a dollar sign, right? Now keep in mind what that means. That means that for every dollar you pay, you expect to lose about five cents. Now why is that? How do casinos live like that? Well, very easily. Um, because what they'll do is they'll keep you there for a really long time. They can't afford to have it be like negative 80 cents or something like that. It would be so atrocious that you wouldn't sit there and play. So they have to keep the winning small on any one game and then what they do is just keep you there playing 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 so yeah you're expected to lose five cents that's what this is you know matter of fact i'm going to type that up one sec there so you can expect to lose about five cents on every line bet you play you place so the way they that works is they keep you there betting 100 
times in a row. They met, want you to bet more chips. Keep in mind, this was only a single dollar chip, but that's why they make the $5 chips a pretty color and the $100 chips even prettier, ooh, you know, because then you're placing larger and larger and larger bets. The Sitting there for 100 spins in a row is the equivalent to putting $100 on the same line bet, right? So if you put $100 on, you can expect to lose 100 times 5 cents which would be $5. And that could be only one bet if it's a $100 chip. Now, is this a fair game? Absolutely not. <laughs> casinos don't work off fair games. And that's not a slight on casinos. They couldn't, right? Um, the way casinos work is they have to have it so that there's a bit of a profit margin in there for them. Otherwise, they can't pay their employees, pay for the electricity, etc. So absolutely not. It's not a fair game, but you wouldn't expect it. However, the, this expected value is not extremely low. I mean, it actually is pretty bad for a casino. There are a lot of better games to play, but still, it's it's not like you're losing 50 cents on the dollar. That's the way scratch-off tickets are. So if you did the same thing for like a scratch-off ticket, like the ones you would buy at a gas station, it wouldn't be negative 0.05. It'd be more like negative 0 0.50. Um, they're really bad because they can afford to be very bad because people don't sit there and play card after card after card the way you do at a casino. So casinos usually have much smaller expected values. Um, it's always negative, otherwise they wouldn't be in operation. There, um, It's not fair game because the expected value for the profit of the player or the house, whatever you want to think about it, is not zero. And of course that makes sense because casinos have to have a house edge, a profit margin on every game, otherwise they couldn't stay in business. And that's what this is. What we found here is called the house edge. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put that in there. It's how much the house is expected. Well, technically the house edge is the positive part. There, I typed that up a little bit better. So the house edge is actually positive 0 0.0526 because the player is expecting to lose five cents. The house expects to gain five cents and that's called their house edge, right? And that's an important thing for a casino. Otherwise they wouldn't be in profit or they wouldn't be in business if they don't make profit. And that's what the house edge is. It's their expected profit for any one game or any one spin of the wheel, any one slot machine, et cetera. So now we've seen what makes a game fair or not fair, having the expected value be not zero. So we want to create a game that would be fair. So you like somebody a lot and you want to play a game with them, but you actually want it to be fair. So not an advantage for you or for the other player. So you like them, but not too much. All right. So now this is going to be interesting because you're going to roll a fair six-sided die and receive the number of dollars that you roll. So that means that your winnings are going to be equal to the number that you rolled. Oops. There we go. So your winnings, the money you're taking in, would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now the probability, well, it's pretty easy to figure because this is a fair die. So every side has an equally likely chance and they're all 1 out of 6. So it's going to be 1 out of 6 for each of the sides. There, I got those in there. Okay, so now we want to be able to find the expected value for this. So let's go to the calculator, stat, edit, and I could just type them, you know, one times this, two times this. And actually, if you're really mathematically savvy, you actually know what this is already, but that's okay. I'm going to show you how to find it anyway. So I'm going to type in our table in here. And there we have it right there, one through six and so on. And just for fun, I thought I'd make this a little bit bigger for you guys so you can see it really easily. There it is. That's what it looks like. All right. Then you're going to press stat, calculate, one variable. You're going to tell it L1 and L2. So that's all good. Just like we've been doing all through this section. And we find 3.5, which... If you're paying attention, you kind of knew it had to be because they're equally likely. The average of 1 and 6 is 3.5. The average of 2 and 5 is 3.5. So the expected value would be 3.5. So when you play this game, you expect to win $3.50. Now to make it a fair game, you should charge that much, right? So if you make it so that your charge is 350 and you expect to earn 350, then your profit will become zero. There we go. 
So we would charge 350 to play the game. That will make the expected profit zero and the game will be fair. Nice. Now, if you don't believe me, I'm gonna prove it to you. So the way the profit thing works, if you wanna find out your profit for your winnings, if you win a dollar, but you paid 350 to play, that gets you at negative 2.5 for your profit. This would be negative 1.5 for your profit. This would be negative 0.5. Oops, the bottom one below it would be 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5. And you can double check yourself and see if you're correct, right? So all I'm doing is subtracting 3.5. Because if you win $5 but you paid 350 to play, that gives you a 150 profit. So I'm going to go back to the calculator, go to stat, go to edit. And I'm going to change these profits over here to, oops, and I press the, the subtraction symbol. I did the same thing I tell you guys never to do. This little negative guy right here. And then negative 1.5. And then negative 0 0.5. 0 0.5. 1.5. 2.5. And if you run one variable stats again. There it is. See? It's zero. So you can double check yourself that way. Let's now apply the expected value to one last gambling game, craps. So craps, people in craps, people bet on the sum of two fair six-sided dice. So you roll the dice, you've seen it in all the movies, and then what they add up to matters to the game. It's obviously a little bit more complicated, but a bet on the roll of 11 is called a yo 11. So at the craps table, you will hear people calling out for a lucky yo, and that means they want an 11 to be rolled. So um, the payout for yo 11 is 15 to 1. So this means that if you bet a dollar and you win, you will receive your $1 back plus $15 from the casino. Okay, so you're going to bet a dollar on what yo 11. Fill in the following probability distribution. So the outcomes are pretty obvious. So I typed those in already. You win on yo 11 or you lose on yo 11. Those are your options. Now, if you lose, that means you're going to lose your dollar. So that means negative one. If you win, however, you're going to get back $15 plus the dollar you paid to play, which means your profit is 15. It's not 16 because the, you're getting your own, own dollar back. So that doesn't really count for your profit. What counts is the 15. So that's your profit. Now, remember, we learned about two six-sided dice back in Chapter 5 right here. Section 5.2, as a matter of fact. And yes, I still expect you to know this sample space right here and also this sum of dice probability distribution right here. They're a classic. And we're particularly interested in Yo 11, which is 2 out of 36. So the probability that we're going to win is 2 out of 36. But that means the probability you're going to lose is 34 out of 36 because together they have to make one. So there's two winning ways, but then there's 34 losing ways to get you a total of 36. Now, all you have to do to find your expected profit is to go type this into stat edit, which I already did. There it is. And then you go to stat, calculate one variable and run it. And it's going to be negative 0.11111. Okay. So that'll be our expected profit. Now keep in mind what that means. That means that for every dollar you pay, you expect to lose 11 cents or so. Right? There we have it. And actually, I'm going to give that a little repeater bar for our own benefit because we're going to need it in a second. All right, now how would that change if instead of betting $1, you bet $10? Well, the answer is it wouldn't really change that much. What would happen is these numbers here would be negative 10 because you bet $10 and 150. So let me just show you what would happen with the profit with the calculator. So if I went up here and I went stat, edit, we would make these numbers 150. There we go. And then negative 10. There, we got it, negative 10. So stat, calculate, one variable. And there you have it, negative 1.11. Now, you didn't have to do all this work to do it. Um, matter of fact, you don't have to change the profit at all um, to figure this out because you know that the expected profit for $1 is 11 cents, negative 11 cents. And 
the one is repeating. So what you can do is you can say, okay, well, if $1 should be negative 11 cents, then $10 would be negative 1.11. You just multiply 10 times your expected profit, right? For every $1, you expected to lose this much. So for $10, you just multiply it by 10 and you're going to have that answer. I just wanted to show you why it works that way because this becomes negative 10, right? because you're betting $10, but for every $1 you bet, you win 15, but if you bet $10, then you'll bet win 150. So that's how that goes. Now that means that your expected profit on a $10 bet on Yo11 is a loss, their capitalized loss. It's a loss of $1 and 11 cents. And that makes sense because it's the same as your expected profit if you bet on one, $1 on a Yo11 10 times in a row. Right? Betting $10 is the same as betting $1 10 times. They're identical, mathematically speaking. right? And of course, the casino wants you to bet $10, $10, $10, because then it not only keeps you there longer, but it means you're going to be losing more and more and more. And that should be an important note to us all. In case you didn't know this about casinos, keep this in mind. The longer you stay in play and the more you bet, the more money you're expecting to lose. It's not that you won't win because you will right? It's that your winnings won't overtake all your losings, right? So you'll win and then you'll lose, 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 lose. You'll lose 34 out of 36 times. You only win out of two out of 36 times. All right, we are all done with that section. I'll see you back here for the binomial distribution.